Big news, the Boating on a Budget project is now completed. Job's done, put my feet up and have a brew. All right, it's not actually completed, but we've got the last crucial bit of equipment installed. That's the water boiler. So we can now have hot and cold running water. We can use the shower. So that means finally after 12 months, I can actually have a wash. I'm not gonna, but I, I could if I wanted. Here comes the slight issue though, because there's always gonna be a slight issue. Nothing's ever gonna run smoothly, is it? It was basically about a week ago we had to have that installed. Ben came and fitted it for us. We got it all up and running, fired up, water coming out, lovely and warm, etc. But we were aware from the time when we ordered it and I spoke to the people and I explained sort of how long the runner pipes were and I told them what pump we'd actually got, the water pump. And they said, our water pump that we got was 25 PSI it runs at. And ideally this machine needs 40 PSI. They did say the 25 PSI one would run it, but it might not give us the right kind of pressure. And guess what? It didn't. It runs, but it coughs and splutters. And I don't want to actually run it now for two reasons. The second one I'll come to shortly. But running it while it's spluttering means there's not a constant flow of water going through the water heater. And that could cause damage. So obviously we don't want to risk damaging it when we've got to change this pump anyway. The second reason is we've also run out of gas. Hence why I've not got a brew in my hand. So as I dropped Dawn off at work this morning, we called and got some gas. So now I need to put that gas bottle on, make myself a brew, and then we'll have a look from there, see what the plan is to get this properly up and running. Beautiful. That's the most important job of the day out of the way. Cup are made. Now we need to get to the water pump, which is just down here under the bed. And if you remember, we put it there, so it's nice and easy to access. It's not under the floor or anything like that, so we're not having to start taking floorboards up. And we're not having to scrabble about on his back, trying to get to where we need to. Which not only makes the job easier, it also means we're far less likely in the future to have issues with leaks and things, because we're not scrabbling about on his back in really tricky places. Pumps here then. And it's on two quick release fittings, which I'm hoping are the same as the new pump that we've bought. The new pump that we've bought is basically the same model, just a higher pressure. That would make life really easy. First job I'm going to do though is turn the water off. Then I'll just nip and turn the tap on just to try and get any dregs out of there. And then I'll disconnect the electric so that the pump's not running. Well, that came out easy enough and so long as these connections are exactly the same with just a couple of electric terminals on the new pump it should go back in just as easy fingers crossed so let's open the new one up and have a look see how it matches up as i'm unpackaging this i will say we got this from midland chandlers we ordered it online and including delivery i think it was about 93 94 pounds we did look on some of the big online places, like your Amazons and things, and the best price we could find it there was about £112, I think. So it does show everyone, not everyone, but a lot of people kind of criticise places like Midland Chandler's, saying that they're expensive. But in actual fact, I don't think they are. And that's coming from the tight Yorkshireman. Right, let's have a look. This is the crucial test. And it's looking good because they basically look the same so i'm sure these ports are the same which then means refitting is going to be dead easy that is what we wanted to see really simple job of wiring up basically i just need to get the same connector on each side as what i've took off and then it'll go straight back into the wiring that's already there this should now be a direct light for light replacement I think we'll keep that because it would do as an emergency backup. It will at least run the cold water if we need it. Let's get this one refitted. The really frustrating thing as I refit this is 
obviously it's not that long since we bought the original pump and in all honesty when we stripped this boat down originally there were about five pumps included with it but we thought rather than reusing any of them and risking them not being right we'd buy a new one i'm just struggling with this connection here there we go i think that's in um but yeah so we we thought we'll not risk using the old ones we'll buy a new one so we bought the new one which did the job especially for the cold water i mean the cold water pressure is fantastic it's just this hot water pressure wasn't up to it but yeah a bit frustrating spend the money on a new pump to then find we have to buy yeah another new pump yeah that's all going to connect up all right so i think the next job turn the water on let's check for any leaks water on and no sign of leaks that should have reprimed the pump if i now go and turn the tap on we'll check some water comes out and then we can get this screwed into place First test then, let's get some hot water in the sink so I can do these pots that Dawn kindly left me. I will have my little grumble. We can't get a plug the right size for this sink seemingly. So we're having to use a plug that don't fit with a bit of kitchen roll. Why can't all sink manufacturers just use one size plug? Today's grumble. But here we go, cold water. Let's try some hot water. Might as well turn the cold off. I can hear the boilers just fired up. Let's give it a minute. And that's already getting warm. So we have hot running water on our boat. Which, to be honest, that's the first time we've ever had hot running water on this boat. Because if you remember when we bought the boat originally, the water system was the only thing that didn't really work at all. So in just over 12 months, took us just over 12 months to get hot running water. I'll do these pots, then let's have a look at that shower. Hang on, how much were that? Well, with that first lot of washing up done, I think it's time to uh, put the kettle on, have a brew, then we'll have a look at that shower. Two main issues with showing you this shower working are, first of all, you don't want to actually see me having a shower. That's not a sight that anybody wants to see. And secondly, it's really tight in this bathroom, so there's not a lot of room to demonstrate. But basically, we've got the shower head there, we've got the lever, let's give it a go. And you can see we've got water coming out, that's just on hot water alone, there's no cold water coming through at that. But let's just see how warm it gets. and that's getting warm and definitely up to sort of temperature that I'd want to shower at so in the first instance and in fact now we're actually getting probably slightly above the temperature we'd want to shower at so definitely got enough heat and there's certainly enough water there 
So yeah, first instance, it's working. Now we're confident we've got our water then, we need to do the couple of last bits so that we can actually have a shower itself. One of those is, there's a pump under here that pumps this water out the shower tray to keep it empty. At the minute it's not wired in and we have got a considerable amount of wiring still to do around the boat. So I think just as at least a little tester, the best thing I can do is get a battery and just connect it direct to that. Because it is an automatic water pump so you don't need a switch or anything. So that's going to be one job. Another issue we've got is at the minute we've not put any shower curtains or screens up. We're not exactly sure how they're going to work or where we're going to need them. The only way I think we're going to work that out is suck it and see to be honest. Once I've got it all working, I'm going to have a shower, see where the water goes and see where we need to put a curtain, possibly where we need a shower screen. We'll take it from there. We're not called winging it for nothing, you know. We don't plan all this stuff in advance. Before I do carry on with any of this though, while I've got them lats up on the bed, I'm going to do a little bit of insulation and pipe work lagging all around there. We are now heading into winter and we do need to get all those pipes and that tank lagged for two reasons. Basically, one, it's winter, there's a chance things could freeze if we've not got the heating on, if we're not on the boat for a day or two while it's cold. And also, around the tank especially, that can cause a lot of condensation which would make things like the mattress and the clothes in that cupboard all damp. It's a job that we knew we'd got to do, but we wanted to make sure we'd got everything working first. No point lagging it all and everything like that and then having to find we need to take stuff off to redo anything. So I'm not going to film that because basically I'm going to have my head under a bed and it's not going to be a pretty sight trying to film what I'm doing. So I'm going to have my brew, crack on with that, then I'll have my test shower so we can see exactly what we're going to need to do in here to finish off our bathroom. Jobs like this then are a classic example as to just why it's taking so long to rebuild the boat. And it's not just because of all the bacon sandwiches and cuppers that I have, although they probably don't help speed it up. But in essence, in the last three and a half hours, all I've done is put some insulation around that water tank, the foil stuff which I've taped up, and then insulated the pipework that runs around the bedroom area. And there were just a couple of little bits in that wardrobe that just needed a little bit of insulation just finishing off in there. Now we've got it all set up. But that's basically took, like I said, three and a half hours. And it's a job that you kind of look at and you think, big 20 minutes, half hour. Time flies when you're having fun with your head under a bed. But anyway, while I were doing that, I made sure the water tank were topped up. Just put the hose pipe into the water tank. Didn't want the water running out while I'm having a shower. I suppose now's the crucial time. Let's give it a test. And now, I don't think you want to join me in the shower. I'll come back to you in a minute. Well, first shower done. Relative success. Let me get dry and we'll have a little chat about what I've discovered. What points do we need to look at then? Well, first off, I guess temperature is one of the main things and it were absolutely spot on. With the boiler set to the maximum like it is and the water turned on purely on the hot water, if anything, it was just a little bit too hot and it were definitely too hot for what Dawn would like it. She prefers just a warm shower than a red hot shower. So at least we know we've got plenty of hot water there and we can either turn the boiler down or just adjust it on the shower head as we need it. Second thing to consider would be the flow. And again, that was more than ample. Plenty of water coming out there. Not one of them where you stood there and you've got a few dribbles dripping on your head. Plenty of power. So that's all good. The shower tray itself performed spot on. There's obviously no leaks. It's holding the water all right. We've obviously now got a little bit of work to do with that, kind of sorting out the duct board and getting the pump and everything installed properly. Because I never did actually put a wire onto that from a battery. Like I said, I we're going to bring a battery down and just couple it up for now. But I've decided that over the coming days, I'm going to have to have a reasonable look at the electrics around the boat. Because at the minute, we are still only able to charge all the batteries just with the solar. And now we're coming in towards winter. Yeah, we're coming in towards winter. We're obviously going to need to be able to charge through running the engine or running a generator, etc. So I'm going to have to do a fair bit of fiddling with the wiring. So I might as well wire that pump in properly 
and get it all done rather than just rigging it up with batteries and things for now. The other obvious thing I was checking there was just what we're going to need in terms of shower screen or curtain. Shower screens would be ideal but the problem is it is only a fairly small shower tray and if we've got a screen either side we might be a bit kind of you know no room to, to have a shower and likewise if we're not careful and put a curtain up in the wrong way we might again find it's kind of clinging to us all the time and not giving us room to move and when I'm washing my hair I, I need plenty of space to move about yeah I think uh, basically Dawn's gonna have to go shopping which I know she'll be really disappointed at and get a shower curtain and before we put the ceiling up so we've got chance to have a little bit of an experiment we can work out where we're gonna actually need kind of a rail or whatever and what sort of style and shape and things like that so that's gonna be another bit of an experiment overall then not only am i really impressed at how the shower's working and coming along it's also just a massive tick in the box of how this project is coming along because like i said that is now basically the last of the main jobs done we've now got, in effect, a fully working boat. There's still then lots of jobs to do, ceilings to fit, trim work to do, cupboard fronts to make, still lots and lots of projects, but we have actually got a fully working boat for the first time since we bought this boat, which was 14 months ago now. I've now got loads of tidying up to do, because I've got stuff everywhere from working around the boat today. And if I don't get tidied up before Dawn gets back from work, I'll get all kinds of earache for not doing tidy up time. So hopefully you've liked this video. I'm sure you're already subscribed to the channel, which is absolutely free. Just means if you're subscribed and you ding the little bell next to the subscribe button, you get notifications each time we put a video on. And therefore, if we've put a video on, we've made progress. We only put videos on as and when we do work. So although this video might have only been the final tweak in a fit in a shower, it's a massive step forward in our project. Thanks for watching then folks. See you all later. Bye bye.